UF spring practices are about halfway finished and the quarterback battle is still the major focus. And we've got some information on that competition that might not be what you are expecting. Here's what I wanna talk about just before we get into this. It is early. I cannot stress that enough. I know we like to like melt down and freak out about every little bit of news that comes out, whether it's positive or negative, especially in the spring, but I wanna remind you of two things, okay? Billy Napier and his staff know how important this season is. And I promise you, his staff will do everything they can to put the best possible team it on the field and put the team in the best possible position to win games. That is their job. As much as you as a fan think that you want the Gators to win, I promise you the staff whose job depends on it wants them to win even more. Also, spring practice is not the end all be all. Formulating a sky is falling mentality based on a handful of practices from a new quarterback in a new system is not what I would consider wise, right? So do me a favor, let's save the meltdowns until at the very least August or September, okay? All right, let's get right into it. First of all, Graham Mertz. This is what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that as of now, he is the leader for the quarterback job. This is not really surprising, right? He hopped in the transfer portal from Wisconsin, came down to UF. He wasn't doing that if he didn't think there was a pretty darn good chance of him winning this job. Supposedly, he is the best right now at leading this offense. That also makes sense because he has the most real game experience. You would expect the guy with the most experience to look the best going into the first few practices of spring. Now, that could change, right? But experience trumps talent, especially in the beginning in spring. Um, I have heard that he's had some turnovers and that's a little bit of a concern for this staff. That's something that they're going to be watching. And you know, that's something that Florida has dealt with uh, last year as well. Turnovers is something they want to really limit, really cut down on. And actually they did do that from last year to the season before that. So it's something that Napier finds a priority, but that's also probably why it was a little bit of a concern for him because it's something that he cares that much about. Also heard that his arm strength isn't elite. That doesn't mean it's not good. That doesn't mean that he is not capable of being a totally serviceable quarterback. But if you're expecting Anthony Richardson arm strength, you're not going to have it this season, no matter who ends up as quarterback, right? But the positives, I've heard that his confidence level, his professionalism, the way that he is in the locker room with his team teammates is an A+. He is phenomenal on that front. He is a leader. That is something that this team will need, right? That is something they are now missing with Anthony Richardson heading to the NFL. So I think that's going to be an important component of this. You want somebody who can stay cool, calm, and collected in SEC games. You want someone that can rally this team and lead this team. And it seems like Mertz really has the personality to do that. So that's a great thing. I will tell you, there's a lot of optimism from the few people that I've talked to that have been out there at practice and that they say that he really places the ball very well when he's on. All right. So that means more live bullets, more live reps. That is going to help him get better, get more comfortable in this system. I'm encouraged by the stuff that I hear about how well he does when he's on. Just before we get into some of the concerns that I've heard, I need a favor from all of you. We're going to start doing some live shows and live interviews. I need to know what you guys want to see if this show's live and, and you can interact that way. Is there a night or a day that works better for you? Comment below and we're going to try to put something together very soon for you guys. All right, well, so the flip side to the optimism that I heard about Mertz when he's on, he's really on, is that there are folks that are fairly concerned about him. I am going to remind you, it is early. When you finish spring, this team is not going to be game ready for September, and that is okay. They don't need to be. This is really early on in the process. The team is figuring out how to gel together. He is learning a brand new system. I don't think there's anything to be overly concerned about. But you know what? We also have Jack Miller and Max Brown. Uh, Miller has done some really good things and he is keeping it very close and he's been showing flashes at time. I don't think he's put it together consistently, which is why I think people are giving Mertz the nod here right now, but he is showing some real flashes of being a very talented quarterback. And similar, we've heard from Max Brown as well, right? Like he has had some really great things. A lot of you guys have seen that video circulating of him from the scrimmage. He throws a dart to Mizell. I think that that's all promising, right? 
I think that some Gator fans think that it's a big issue that Mertz hasn't separated himself yet. Um, I do think there's some internal confidence within the program that he will. I want to remind you again for the millionth time in this video, it is still early. I actually don't think it's a huge problem that he hasn't separated himself. I refer back to you know, to the, the quote, iron sharpens iron, right? That's something you hear in a football locker room all the time. I think that it's true here. I think these guys will continue to push each other. I think that we don't know a whole lot about all three of them. So I don't, I don't think it's a problem to continue to see what each one brings to the table. I also think from a confidence standpoint from all three of them, it's best that a starter isn't uh, isn't named super early, right? For these guys to continue to feel like they are in this battle is probably good for the long term. It's also great for nobody hitting the transfer portal, right? If all three believe they have a real opportunity to potentially earn the starting job, they're not going to be looking to enter the portal when it opens up at the beginning of the May of May. So, I don't I don't think that that this is a problem that we don't have Mertz having separated himself. Now, could we have a different opinion in a week? Could Mertz, you know, really take a, a step forward? Absolutely, we could. But I personally think that this quarterback competition is going to go on really deep into the summer, more than likely. Um, and I think that that's okay. I don't think that that's a bad thing. And, you know, Napier's going to have his guys back, right? He has said positive things about all of his quarterbacks and really all of his players. That is to be expected, right? That's what you want out of your coach. You definitely don't want a coach that sits up there, uh, you know, behind the mic and talks poorly of his players. But I do think there's probably some internal concern with what they've seen out of all of the quarterbacks so far. But again, it's early. More live reps more live bullets are going to help this situation. I think that the, the coaches are confident that it can be helped. And ultimately, whether the starter is Graham Mertz or Miller or Brown, the starter just needs to be serviceable. We've talked about this before. Florida is going to have a really good offensive line this year. They had a great one last year. This year's is going to be even better. They have probably the best running back duo in the entire SEC, right? I Certainly in the East. So, I think that this offense is going to be good. They've got receivers that have taken a step forward. Ricky Pearsall is back. Like, I just don't think this guy has to be all world, whoever the starter is. I think that he needs to really play a clean game, make no mistakes. I don't think that he has to be some Heisman candidate. So, uh, you know, UF loves what they have on offense. Again, don't need an elite quarterback. I do think that Billy schemes really well for the pieces that he has too. And so I think that that makes them pretty confident that they can go with whoever, you know, whoever they need to. The other thing is the tight ends are playing a lot better than we've seen, at least under Napier. Um, Napier in his press conference mentioned all three tight ends making huge plays. We've already heard from Shannon Snell about the depth at offensive line. He also talked a little bit about the tight ends too. So uh, when you couple that with this wide receiver class that is ultra talented, I'm just not that that concerned. Um, I am interesting to see how things progress as spring goes on though, right? I'm going to stay very close to this battle and continue to keep you updated on what I hear on a weekly basis. We're going to keep chatting with those that are in the program and up there at practice all the time. We'll do more interviews with as many people as we can to find out what they're saying. Um, again, don't forget to comment below what times and, and days you would like to see us go live. We're excited to do live shows and want to interact with all of you. I also wanted to say thank you so much for all the love that you have given me the last few weeks. It's been truly amazing and I would love to grow our community. So if you are interested in becoming a member to grow the family and get exclusive perks, go ahead and hit join. And if you missed our video on UF working to flip one of FSU's top commitments, go ahead and click right here.